It's a mystical elixir from an ancient time, but it's a staple today, exploding on the natural holistic scene. It's a huge thing. It's got probiotics. It's like our nectar. <laughs> it's got compounds that aid in detoxification. But the exact origin and powerful health benefits of kombucha tea are more debatable now. I don't know of any health benefits. Just legends, some believe. But when it comes to science, there is no science. Still, the ancient throwback is making a sweeping comeback on store shelves. It's our number one selling category, kombucha drinks. People even buy it by the case. But the high cost of the bubbly beverage is prompting more people to <laughs> brew it in bulk at home. Oh, it's so easy. I mean, honestly, it's just dump and wait. And if you can brew tea, you can make kombucha. <laughs> Allison Kramer, expert baker and kombucha maker, brews plain caffeinated green or black tea in filtered water, dissolving in some real sugar. It has to be sugar because the bacteria feeds on it. This jar contains that bacteria and yeast. And you can see some, some yeasties floating around in there. Don't be too scared. That's all good for you. A mushroom-like culture called a scoby. It's, it's just a bunch of fungus that works, you know, a lot like um, regular yeast. It is grown with a mother. You buy one mama scoby for about 10 bucks, and you just keep her reproducing. And then that's how you start, and that's called a baby scoby. But first, dump the cool down tea and nine cups of water into a gallon glass jar, then the scoby. What's it smell like to you? It smells like beer <laughs> or apple cider. Um, that's a weird looking thing down in there. <laughs> so there, I'll go in there. Mm -hmm. Allison says getting a good SCOBY, preventing mold and contamination, are key over the 10 to 14 day fermentation process. I would say just getting your SCOBY from a reputable source where you know it's you know safe to use. And How do you know that though? Uh, well, the, the places online that I get it from are very reputable, the Kombucha Brooklyn and kombuchacamp.com. And, um, and if you have a friend you trust. Now that's where our Dr. Mike Sarigliano, who supports natural remedies, cautions. More can go wrong here than right. You don't know. It's a crapshoot, and it is a big experiment. There's a very low risk, I think, for contamination if you're careful. This would be ill-advised. It can also cause stomach pain, stomach cramps. I would be very concerned if I were going to concoct my own fermented beverage. I even worry about people making their own wine and beer. <laughs> Allison says use sterilized glass containers. Try to keep an eye on it. Uh, check it every day. Watch for molding and smell for spoilage. Allison says she has not brewed a bad batch yet. Oh boy. Now our brew? Let me uncover it here. Left in the hands of news executive producer Megan Duncan. Right, Allison, what do you think? Yeah. Bad idea. It's days overbrewed. It is vinegary. Nice. Instead. Nice showing you. Cheers. We tried Allison's nine day brew mid process. That's not bad. It's good. It's good. You like it? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. Yay. <laughs>